Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away me and to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you. Beautiful morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer, brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Outside is the brightest morning I have seen in about a week. Mm -hmm. The sky looks mm, more blue than gray. The breeze is blowing the tops of the coconut tree. The sea seems calm. The birds are singing, and on the horizon, a tinge of orange that lets me know it's going to be a warm day ahead. I hope you're having a beautiful morning where you are this morning because I will tell you what, I don't feel 100% today, but I'm having a beautiful day nonetheless. We're going to kick things off this morning with this one entitled, Lord, for thy tender mercy's sake. Let's have a listen.
Now that was beautiful indeed, wasn't it? I mean, the way the voices blended together, there was no musical instruments, of course. And guess what? The amens at the end. Oof, perfect, perfect way to start the morning. Let's continue then getting our words here up on screen for today, October the 30th in 2023. And I can make that happen, you know. I can make that happen here in three, two, and one. Their song has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world. Words from Psalm number 19, verse 4. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are using versicle 1 on page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37 in our books of common prayer. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause briefly to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things that might have been unkind, even to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sin. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Psalms for this morning are Psalms 41 and Psalm 52, and it will be from a previously recorded version of the Psalm, and leading us in the reading is Miss Cheyenne Williams. Let's have a listen. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 41 and Psalm 52. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive, so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who has broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up. 
and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen, amen. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin, your tongue is like a sharpened razor, a worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking truth. You love all words that hurt, O oh, you deceitful tongue. O oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will forever be. Amen. We want to thank Ms. Cheyenne for leading us in the week of the Sabbath. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 10, the second song of Isaiah, based on Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 to 10. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts, and let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 12, verses 43 through to 50. Let's have a listen. A reading of the Word of God. Written in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 12, reading verses 43 through to 50. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it wanders through waterless regions looking for a resting place, but it finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. When it comes, it finds it empty, swept and put in order. And then it goes and brings along seven other spirits, more evil than itself. And they enter and live there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So it will be with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brother were standing outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and your brother are standing outside wanting to speak with you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You 
If you afford me a couple seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading, this portion of scripture seems to be one in which Jesus has been quite upstart to his mother, eh? But it's not that at all. Why is this not coming up? It's going to come up in 3, 2, and 1. It should be on the screen now. This portion of scripture in Matthew chapter 12 begins with Jesus explaining unclean spirits and the casting out of demons and, and how that worked. Now, remember, yes, the Pharisees and scribes would have been following behind Jesus. Jesus. And the last time we heard them, which was in Matthew chapter 12, verse 22 to 32, which was on Friday, Jesus reveals the desperate place of those who were hardening their hearts to even try to accuse him of being working through the power of Beelzebub. And on Saturday and Sunday, we would have missed the portion of scripture where it tells us that um, Jesus would have, in his exchange with the religious leaders, recognize and expose the, the fact that the words of the religious leaders were betraying the depravity of their heart. And Jesus would have used the words, a tree is known by its fruit. The bad fruit of their words, when they were condemning Jesus, betrayed the bad roots growing in the heart of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were trying to entrap him. And Jesus, of course, calls them a brood of vipers and tells them that out of the abundance of their heart, the mouth shall speak. And even though we didn't look at that portion of scripture on Saturday and Sunday, it is important for us to remember that. Yes, it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Our words reveal what is inside our hearts. If there is good treasure in our hearts, good things will come out. But like the religious leaders, if there is no good treasure in our heart, then the things that can come out are not going to be the nicest or the best things at all. And hmm, Jesus was making a very interesting point there. And then in verse 38 through to 40, the scribes and the Pharisees are going to now request a sign for Jesus. Okay, so you keep stamping us with your words and you keep embarrassing us with your explanations. But even though we can't entrap you with your words, just yet. Because they're not going to stop looking. But even though we can't entrap you with your words just yet, do a sign for us. Hmm? Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. And their desire to see a sign really expressed another way in which they hope to reject Jesus. If Jesus did provide a sign, they would find some way to speak against it. Thus pro proving to themselves that Jesus was who they already thought he was, an emissary of Satan. But if he didn't, produce a sign then they would say look and he claims to be the messiah and he can't so they were still trying to trap jesus but of course jesus told them there would be no sign other than the one yes given through the sign of jonah and what a great sign that was jonah was a prophet in the sense that beyond his preaching to nineveh his life was a prophecy of the death and resurrection of jesus in terms of the tying it with the fact that Jonah was lost in the belly of the wave for three days and then was spewed out. Three days and three nights. Yes? Mm -hmm. That's the similarity between Jonah and Jesus himself. But then now, in verse 41 and 42, which is where we are today, leading up to verse 50, all right? Um, Jesus announces the condemnation of the religious leaders at the hand of the Ninevites and the Queen of the South right before going into the dangerous consequences of the rejection of Jesus by the religious leaders and by the people around him. Now, Jesus uses the analogy of an unclean spirit being driven out of a body. Why? Because that is the setting where they just were. And Jesus is telling them, the rejection and opposition that you're giving me, if you continue, it's going to leave you much worse off than you actually are before you have come to know me and he uses the analogy of when an unclean spirit goes out of a man in this context the main point of jesus was not upon principles of demonic possessions he was explaining the seriousness of rejecting him as completely as the religious leaders were he tells them when an unclean spirit goes out of a person it wanders in a waterless region looking for a resting place but finds none and finding none it comes back to where it came from. And now that the person is free and clean, the spirit says, okay, let me go back to possess that person. Yes? And 
when it comes back and it finds that that person is clean, free, and available, it goes and collects some of its friends in order to do more damage. Now, in terms of principles of demonic possessions, one of the things that I would have learned over the years is that if you're going to pray to cast out a demon or against a negative spirit, you bind it and you return it to the pit of hell from which it comes so that it doesn't wander about roaming, looking for a new place to go. You also learn that when you cast out an evil spirit or when you pray out a, a demon out of someone you replace that demon with the presence of the holy spirit of god that if that demon ever comes back he finds the presence of the holy spirit and doesn't find a new place and a clean place for it to dwell right so that's one thing but what jesus was trying to say to them is that you keep rejecting me yes you keep looking for something that you will not find and you will come back and when you think you are okay you are not going to be okay the rejection and opposition of jesus would leave them in a much worse off state than before hmm? it ex exemplified by the religious leaders rejecting jesus they would find their last state worse than the first in large measure, the, 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 the scribes and the Pharisees rejected Jesus because for them, he wasn't messianic enough for their taste, you know? He wasn't fulfilling the sense of being for them that a political and military messiah was supposed to have. But they thirst, yeah? They thirst for a messiah, but they wanted a particular kind. And their thirst for this kind of messiah would lead them to their ruin by 70 AD when the temple is destroyed and not one stone will be upon each other like Jesus prophesied while he was alive. Hmm? So while the illustration tells us some in interesting principles about demonic possession and, and shows us that Jesus regarded it as a real phenomenon and not just a contemporary sensation or superstition, hmm? he was also using it to make a point was also using it to make a point he was trying to tell them you're going to be far off worse hmm? Hmm. he's telling them if you are filled with me if you are actually born again by the spirit of god you will not be empty you will not be thirsting you will not be seeking hmm? and your last day will not be as worse as the first. There is something worse than being simple demon possessed and there is something worse than being curious about the things of God and questioning who God is and who Christ is as the Messiah. There is something worse. There is an acceptance of the state in which you're in and which comes through a rejection of Jesus Christ. And you keep rejecting Jesus Christ. You keep opening up to yourself yourself to things that are not of him. You know? And these Pharisees kept rejecting Jesus. And like he said in the previous version of scripture, it is out of the hardness of their hearts and the wickedness that dwells within them that they could come to assault him time and time again. And they are not seeing it. The more they reject him, the more they will have a desire to assault him. And it's interesting because he's trying to get them to see. Like we said on Friday, those who do not gather with me, scatter. Those who are not for me are against me. And then he goes into proving or speaking out about those who are for him. It says, while he is still speaking to the crowd, his mother and his brothers were standing outside wanting to speak with him. And somebody came to tell him, look, your relatives outside, they want to see you. And here it seems as though Jesus is being a little bit disrespectful, yes? Because he says to the person who comes with this message, eh -eh, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And then pointing to his disciples, he says, here are my mother and my brothers. Hmm, hard, no? I mean, considering the general context of opposition to Jesus, it may well be that the family of Jesus wanted to appeal to him to not be so controversial or maybe they just miss him and wanted to spend time with him but whether the members of his family had come to take him or not 
they had come to see him. Hmm? And what? Even in today's society, if you can't catch Harry, you catch his shirt. In today's society, when someone tries to attack you and can't get to you, they go to assault your family. Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens. It absolutely does happen. And the identifying of Jesus' mother and brother, his biological family. Hmm? We might have expected Jesus' family would have specific privileges, no? That he would treat them different because this is his mommy and these are his siblings. But what he was trying to show them was that there is no partiality in his kingdom. Yes, he loved his mommy. His mommy was his mommy. Everybody loved their mommy. Hmm? What he was trying to show them surprised all of them. They did not have, just as we do not have, any special privileges. My mother and my father and my sister and my brother are those who will do what my father in heaven has called them to do. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had no special favor with Jesus then and perhaps not even now. She stands as a wonderful example of one who has who was privileged by God and stood by Jesus in his life. But Mary had to live her life with faith in God and in her son Jesus Christ as the Messiah, just as we do. Mm -hmm. Like I always tell you, there's no special line that priests get to go into heaven. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to work out their own salvation. Yes? And work out, working out their own salvation, everybody has to strive to do what is right in the sight of God in order to be able to keep the glories of the kingdom. Jesus had brothers. Hmm? And whether the idea of that is, you know what, put forward by the perpetual virginity of Mary is contradicting or not, clearly the Bible says that he had brothers and sisters. Yeah? Are his brothers and sisters not with us? John chapter 7 verse 5, the brothers of Jesus never seem to be supportive of his ministry before his death and his resurrection. Hmm? But Jesus was saying no. Jesus was saying no. Jesus was saying my brothers and my sister and my mother, those beloved ones who do the will of God, those who stand in contrast to the evil and adulterous generation represented by the Pharisees, those who come to believe that I come from God, these are my brothers and sisters and these are the ones that I will regard as such. Hmm? And it was not a disrespect to his family. It was a teaching instance that outside of biological definitions, we are all members of a family of God. All brothers and sisters with Christ, if we choose, the side of Christ. And I feel that those who are best acknowledged as relatives of Christ, who are united to him by spiritual ties, who show their love for him and their reverence and respect for God the Father, I believe that there is a special place for those in him. Whoever does the will of God is esteemed by Christ as his brother, his sisters, and even his mother. And I guess the only thing to be further learned from this portion of scripture, right, is how dear believers are, are, and how holy everyone is to Christ. He counts all those who seek to do the will of his father. He counts them as personal relatives. And that teaches us the esteem that he has for us, but more so the esteem we are to have for one another. Hmm? We who are trying to walk the way of Christ, we who are trying to do the will of the Father, brothers and sisters and mothers of Christ himself, that is high esteem. And it's not until we recognize how highly we are regarded by Christ when we seek to do the will of God, 
that we perhaps might be motivated to do it more often. This is my prayer. That our hearts not be hardened like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. That we don't go around questioning God and trying to get him to prove himself to us. Because sometimes in our human nature that does happen. I pray that we recognize that we don't need a sign from Christ outside of those that he has given us. To be able to trust him, to be able to walk with him, to be able to recognize that he is the Messiah and all that we need. And I hope that when we seek for Christ, we come to know that we are a part of his family because we are striving to do the will of his Father. And having these two comforts, I pray that when the time comes, that we are to be acknowledged before God, judged by His Son, that we would have lived life in such a way that Christ is happy to identify us before His God as His brothers and His sisters and His mother. And what a glorious family reunion! that we see. Hmm? Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> oh, it has new meaning, eh? Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach your leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and to servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collect for today is the collect for Pentecost chapter 25. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for the poor and neglected. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to, he help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In today's World Cycle of Prayer, we remember and pray for the people of Liechtenstein, and in our Ecumenical Cycle of Prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers 
who are members of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. And now, let us turn to our own prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. In our prayers this morning, we want to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Mr. Calvin Osman and Miss Alia Valentine. And celebrating a birthday today is Mrs. Virginia Paulino. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for your birthday, but for all the remaining days ahead. Happy birthday! In our prayers this morning, we want to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we want to continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Kim, Miss Darla, Miss Janet, Miss Beryl, Miss Soila. Miss Lisa, Miss Justine, Miss Aislin, Miss Dez, Miss Sylvia, Miss Monica, Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, and Miss Molly. We pray for Miss Amy, Miss Teresa, Miss Alkia, Miss LaShawn, Miss Jessica, Miss Celestina, Miss Gloria, Miss Marva, Miss Marta, Miss Betty, Miss Agnes. Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Fit, Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvoline, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Emily. We remember and pray for Miss Verilyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alea, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Shell Madine. Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Ulisse, Miss Ulici, Miss Lisa T, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, Miss Marcia, Miss Maisie, Miss Nadia, Miss Elva, Miss Sharon, Reverend Tilona, Miss Velina, Miss Kelia, Miss Catherine, Miss Fiona, Miss Caroline, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Reverend Linda, Miss Charlene, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle. Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Zinzi, Miss Suzette, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Cherie, Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, and Miss Desiree. In our prayers, we pray for the following of our brothers. We continue to remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin. Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Pablo. Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean, Bishop Nicasio, Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Brindle, Mr. Michael Zabaranis, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Kirk, Mr. Russell, and Mr. Con and Father Constancio. We remember and pray for Mr. Ted, Mr. Donald, Mr. Paul, Sir Colvin. Mr. Marlon, Mr. Kieron, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Richard, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Bishop Wright, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Chris, Mr. Ernest, Father Mark, Bishop Curry, Mr. Grayson, Mr. Lincoln, and Mr. Gustavo. In our prayers, we continue to pray for healing for persons who may have contracted COVID-19, those recovering and experiencing post-COVID syndrome, persons who care for those who are infirmed and those in isolation. We give Almighty God thanks for the availability of a vaccine 
as we continue to pray for the containment and the eventual elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the protection and enablement of those persons who care for the infirm, praying especially for those who are in the medical profession. We remember for those in, we remember and pray for those who are in both public and private institutions. We remember and pray especially for doctors Hidalgo Ariaga, Lawrence, Molina, Shogreen, Sosa, Young, Ken, Mongia, Arnold, Arana, Quayar, Ek, Joseph, and Manzanero. We pray for our nurses, pray for Nurse McKean, Nurse Joyce, and Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, Nurse Lino, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Ero, Nurse Cherie, and the Nurse Alejandra. We remember and pray for all medical professionals in the performance of their duties and all those who work in both public and private institutions in their various capacities. We conclude our prayers for the infirm and for medical personnel by praying together, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister for their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We continue to pray for Mr. Juan Peters, Mr. Aldous Arthurs, Ms. Dorette Montero, Ms. Eileen Maria, Kenan Jeros Valentine, Mr. Marlon Wade Jr. We pray for Mr. Edgar Sainsbury, Mr. David Flores, Ms. Sandra Ritchie, Ms. Shirley Castillo, Ms. Merlene McKenzie, Ms. Elizabeth Whitty, Mr. Halton Ritchie, Mr. Ellie Moreira and Mr. Francis. Lorenzo. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Tiffany, Arian, Akua, Courtney, Kai, Jamal, Ria, Karina, Tammy, Ashley, Garrett, Anil, Randolph, and Elisa. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Emil, Prince, Candy, Christopher, Keishan, Gavin, Sam, Charles C., Derek, and Charles S. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society, praying for the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, especially those battling autoimmune illnesses, those battling HIV and AIDS, those battling the various forms and stages of cancer, those battling mental health challenges, and those battling drug and substance abuse and their related ailments. We continue to pray for God's protection and provision over them at this time. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our security forces. We remember and pray for our Coast Guard, our Police Force, our Belize Defense Force. We remember and pray for all our security officers in their various companies. We continue to pray for our government, for the Governor General, the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition, the Ministers of Parliament, the Ambassadors or various Ambassadors, all our public servants, especially those who traverse the roads for work. We continue to pray for our churches and our church leadership, for persons in positions of public trust and authority for the private sector, and then for all non-governmental organizations who are involved in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember and pray for our places of educational and learning, for all of our teachers, our professors, our students, our wardens. We pray for God's protection and provision over them for the week ahead. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, for persons in countries that are ravaged by the effects of natural disaster, for persons in countries that are ravaged by the effects of war and civil unrest, for all persons in their various stages of recovery, that God's protection and provision will be upon them. We pray for them even as we pray for protection 
for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercession this morning by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to meet each new day in your presence as well as in the presence of Almighty God. I want to thank you for joining me this morning as well as for joining us yesterday for our online service. We want to thank Bishop and Mrs. Wright and the online ministry team as well as Love FM both to, for bringing it um, live on the TV in broadcast, in video, and in on radio, in audio. We want to thank all of you as well for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize, not only for their Sunday services, but indeed for all of our services. And speaking about all of our services, I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. to close of the day. I want to thank you again for your continued support of the work of the Ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize and remind you that you could catch any or all of those services on any of our Facebook pages for the churches in the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this beautiful Monday morning sun, bright and orange outside, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. We're going to wrap things up, brothers and sisters, with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with this one. Oh, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. I do pray you enjoy it. I pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye for now.
Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day. Before He take me away, we had to be grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody they do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray. Said thank you. Wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. 